Hey guys, name in here for another Modern Mana Breakdown. Um, kind of going to be consistently on Thursdays that we're going to be uploading now. This will be our fourth video of it, so if you guys um, have missed out on our previous ones and want to check those out, you guys can head over and check out all those other ones. We're going to start putting them up in a specific playlist so you can go through and take a look. So we've done Death Shadow, Jund, Abzan, Lantern Control, the Sun and Moon deck, or Red White Nahiri style, Abzan Company, Kiki Cord, and going to be doing something a little bit different, shifting gears. Um, I know we've had a couple different decks that have been popping up, like with a couple events taking place. Our city had their um, event over the weekend for Dallas, which you know was another win for Death Shadow. Um, but there was also that Green White Company list. Um, but we're going to save that specific list uh, when we talk more about other creature-based decks. Today is going to be a little different. We're going to storm it out, you know? Talk about playing Solitaire in Magic because, you know, who doesn't like playing Solitaire, right? Just kidding. I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a Storm player. This is not the kind of deck that I want to play. Um, you know, it does exist in Legacy, very powerful, um, of course, in that format there. But it's... People were all like, oh, Gataxian Probe was kind of helping Storm, and Storm wasn't even around really at all. But now, Storm is back. So we're going to talk a little bit about the two Storm decks that you could be playing in Modern currently. Slightly different in what you're trying to do uh, in each of these versions of Storm. So we're going to start with our first version, which is kind of the classic one, uh, and we've you know, of course, got Caleb here to kind of go along with the deck that we're going to showcase because this is what he did pilot um, previously here. So, with the classic storm aspect of it, for every card that you're playing um, this turn, including not only the cards that you're playing but your opponent are playing, adds to the storm count, and then you're going to be casting a specific card like Grape Shot here, which is kind of one of the main ways to kill with storm in modern. Uh, deals one damage to a creature or player, and then of course you make copies of it for your storm count. So if you cast a bunch of cantrips and you're like, all right, I'm gonna draw a card or just generate mana and do things like that, just gonna cycle through my stuff, then I'm gonna have a large storm count and just kill you. Cool. Uh, the other way is, of course, empty the warrens, um, which just makes a bunch of one one goblins. So you can just kind of overrun them, swarm the field. Now this one does cost four to cast. Um, while Grape Shot only costs two. Now, both of them are sorcery speed, so that is something that you have to keep in mind. Those dispels that you're trying to bring in the board, not going to work to stop those cards. And then you have to keep in mind you're making a bunch of copies whenever you're um, activating this. So then you can be able to um, redirect it to different creatures or players for each copy or just go, you know what, that's all coming at you. Um, the deck has kind of increased... In, if you will, uh, in popularity and resurgence based on our newest creature here from um, Aether Revolt, which uh, people have joked about um, his name, but it's Baral, Chief of Compliance. Some people like Beryl or what, you know, whatever. But he's basically a new version of Goblin Electromancer. He is legendary, though, uh, so you do have to keep that in mind. But he's 1-3, so does have decent amount of toughness on him to stay alive does not pass the ball test will die to that but makes all of your incident sorceries cost one less um same thing as electromancer but does cost it is a 2-2 two -two, does cost a blue and a red so you know maybe mana shouldn't be an issue for this deck because it is only two colors um also does have that aspect of if you counter a spell um you get to loot um and it does run remands so that is an extra draw step uh, set up for you. Now, the main objective for this deck, like we talked about, is to be able to build up a giant storm count and go off. And it is 100% playing solitaire. You ignore what your opponents are doing, and you start to gather up some cards in your hand. Um, you're going to be trying to get some mana accelerators in there. Desperate Ritual... Um, is, is one of them. Manamorphos, of course, adds two. You get to draw a card off of that. Um, Pyretic Ritual. So 
Desperate Ritual, Pyretic Ritual are big ones to generate a lot of red mana there. Um, because you are going to be wanting to cast a lot of your stuff from the graveyard, Passing Flames is available. Now, the newer list here that we're running is called Gift Storm because it does now run um, Gifts Ungiven in there, which lets you search for four cards, uh, different names. Your opponent picks two of them, they go to your hand, two go to your graveyard. Now, if you only pick two cards, because you can pick up to four, they only pick two cards, well, guess what? They are going to be choosing both of those cards, and they're both going to the graveyard, which can actually be helping you out because you could be going for those past and flames and doing things like that. Um, so the objective is to sit there, play out one of your creatures, Goblin Electromancer, Brawl, and then start to go off with your mana. Um, once you get to the point where you've been able to cast some Serum Visions, some Slate of Hands, some of these draw spells here to set yourself up, um, you know, the Manamorphose also is able to cycle, get to the point where you can be able to get your gifts to go off, um, be able to get enough mana to be able to cast your, your past in flames there, which allows everything to have flashback. And if you have, of course, any of your creatures out, these spells are all going to be cost, costing one less. Um, so like Grape Shot costs one red then, um, which is nice. Desperate Ritual, one red, generate three. It's pretty sweet. Uh, it's very short on the land base. You can see only 18. You can go for more budget with it. You don't have to run the Scalding Torrents, but now that they're reprinted, you know, might be something to look into. But Fire Bluff Canal makes a lot of sense. You're going to have those fast lands uh, in there, some fetches, some basics, if you will. Um, but it is, again, a solitaire game where you just sit there and go, all right, well, here's turn three. I've got my creature already out. You know, I can got some draw set up i've got some mana accelerators let's see if we can go off and, and get there and be able to cast this um desperate risk rule or cast this gifts and given be able to um set myself up and get a good grape shot going um sideboard wise this is a go-to card that you're going to see in sideboards for the storm blood moon it's a great card now there's variants on how you have the rest of the cards but you see sprinklings of some control like just spells spell piercers things like that um, bolts are often found in the sideboards if they need those single target removal stuff like that empty the warrens also you you'll find a couple extra copies um, of some storm cards in there uh, we see that with caleb's list he was only running one empty the warrens main board two grape shot some people prefer variants of it but this is kind of a more straightforward style that you're going to expect to see so um again if you like basically sitting there and ignoring what your opponent is going to do this is the deck for you um now it can be disrupted um this version does rely more heavily on the graveyard um so if you're running specific cards to target the graveyard and disrupt the graveyard that can help you out so keep that in mind for your sideboard side of things now let's talk about the second storm deck that's running around here um Cheerios is what people have, you know, often referred to it as, or just pure steel paladin. Um, it only ran pure steel for the longest time, and people were trying it out and was doing okay. You know, definitely that kind of fringe tier three version. This version, though, has kind of climbed up a little bit more, and another solitaire deck, very explosive, can just straight up win turn two turn three um you know if it if it gets the crazy hands that it needs so again only running eight creatures pure steel paladin uh of course what it's named after original guy here um two white for him for a two two whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control draw a card and then of course if you have three or more artifacts you can equip equipments for zero uh that's more or less irrelevant. The first part is really what matters. Then we've got our newest addition here. <gasps> One colorless and a white for our legendary dwarf advisor here. SRAM, senior um, edificer here. 2-2, two, two, basically the same thing that Pure Steel Paladin does. He's going to allow you to draw a card whenever you cast an or equipment or a vehicle spell. So we only care about those equipments. So objective is to get one or both. Both just is crazy. 
um, lets you get out one of your creatures, and then you play all of these equipments that you have. And guess what? They're all zero cost. Everything that you want to be doing is going to be zero cost here. All these equipments. So four, three, four, four. Pretty much you're, you're set up so you're cycling every time you play one of those. All right. Spider Silk's next. Cool. Boom. Draw a card. Paradise Mantle. Cool. Draw a card. Um, and you're going to retract. Return all artifacts you control to their hand. So you basically bounce all of those equipments that you've done and recast them all. Now you're able to do this because you can throw down a Mox Opal. Sweet. Um, also have ways to set yourself up. Some Serum Visions. Noxious Revival. Put target card from a graveyard on top of someone else's library. Cool. Well, I've used my Retract. Guess what? I'll put that back on top of my library. No longer in my graveyard. Pay two life to do that. Sweet. Now I'll just play another equipment. Draw that card. Oh, look. Here's a Retract. Sweet. Now I can retract and do it all over again. And you just get a giant storm count and you cast Grape Shot and you kill them. Um, so that's basically how the deck is set up to go. Um, basically, as long as you can shut down the creatures, you shouldn't have too much of an issue with this deck. It's when you don't know that you're playing it initially and don't keep a hand that's focused on killing off his creatures that's when you guys can suffer or you know maybe you just have a deck that's not geared around that like we saw um one of the scg events where pure steel versus merfolk and the merfolk player just was like yep yeah, you got it i don't i have nothing that i can do against this okay cool draw your whole library pretty much and kill me and that can happen. Like, it can win crazy early unless you have a way to deal with it. But it only has eight creatures. So that is, again, where you have to attack this deck if you end up facing against it. Now we see some sideboard stuff that's got the grid because you've got all these equipments that are going to be laying on the field. Well, now I can tap them and deal damage. So that's a nice little aspect of it. Lay on your Sanctity, of course, saying, hey, you cannot target me. So those Inquisitions, those Thought Seeds that you want to try to do to strip away my creature, not going to work. Those Bolts, those Burn Spells, not going to work here. Um, we'll also see Echoing Truth. Um, another way that you can kind of bounce some of your artifacts if you need to, but mainly dealing with um, Planeswalkers, mainly dealing with, with creatures, just ways to help keep you alive. So that's, that's a nice aspect of it. Uh, here's our outcome here, paradoxical outcome. Return any number of target non-land, non-token permits you control to their owner's hand. Draw a card for each card returned to your hand this way. So again, just extra ways to just bounce things. Um, silence is another thing that they do uh, run in their list here because they can say, well, hey, you, you're not going to cast any spells this turn and I'm going to 100% guarantee that I'm going to kill you. Sorry. Not sorry. Um... It's a rude dude card. You'll you'll see um, some of uh, some other combo decks run silence as well from from time to time. There's one in particular which we'll talk about more in the future when we go over some different decks. Swan Song, um, two sideboard, two main board. So again, objective: play all my artifacts, return all my artifacts to my hand, play them again, and every time I'm playing an artifact, I'm drawing a card until I get up to a grape shot, and then I'm gonna play Mox. Opal, you know, be set up nicely, and I'm I'm gonna kill you. Cast, boom, grape shot, and you're dead. So storm is a thing in modern guys. It does exist. If that's what you want to be doing, you can. You no, know, the the decks do exist. Modern is such a wide open format, and it's set up nicely that if there's a specific style that you want to play, you can actually do it right now for the format and things are really fun and really exciting for it. So make sure you guys um, are playing all these different decks and you know, let me know what decks you guys are currently using in modern. Cause I'm still bouncing around between lots of different decks and I haven't really found my home um, since the whole infect stuff has, has fallen off with the way the meta shaped up. In fact, it's not positioned well against a lot of these decks, but eh, it, it happens from time to time. So, uh, metas shift and change and that's one of the reasons why we wanted to highlight the meta currently because it's so wide open right now and so exciting to see so many different decks now uh, as a reminder if you guys like this stuff 
please hit the follow button, subscribes, all that kind of good stuff. In chat, let me know if there's specific decks that you'd like to see. That's one of the reasons why we were able to talk about the Adzan Company and Kiki Core decks last time, um, because some of our viewers requested it, and so that was one of the videos that we did end up making. Um, we also, have, of course, have Modern Magic Mondays. We are almost done with season number four. If you guys have not seen any of that, Twitch and YouTube.com slash Modern Magic Mondays weekly modern coverage for over a year now we've been doing it so you guys can check out all that high level uh content that we've got over on that side of things um at the beginning of the video i talked about the pack stuff that we're doing because we did end up going to packs my wife and i and recorded some of the videos the first one is up it's maybe 11 12 minutes of our travel on the train going to the aquarium doing some stuff around boston um the first video of actual packs is going to be a, a short one because I didn't spend as much time filming because I spent a lot more time doing stuff and just like taking everything in, exploring and seeing all the different stuff of PAX. Uh, but the second day of PAX is going to be a little bit longer, I believe. So, you know, check those out. Those are going to be sprinkled over the next um, couple of days, couple maybe a week maximum to get the couple other videos for that. But again, Modern Meta Breakdown is going to be coming up every Thursday for the foreseeable future. I've made a list of about 30 some decks that we can be talking about and, and showing off here. So if there's one in particular you'd like to, to see or specific ones you want to hear more about, let me know and I'll do my best to uh, highlight them for you guys. But that's going to do it here. Thanks again for tuning in guys and I'll see you guys next game.